the National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These counter spy reports to the American people are brought to you each Friday night. Tonight, the case of the insidious impersonation. Agent Ferguson, Counter Spy Liaison Bureau, Washington, to David Harding, Communication Section, Pacific Coast Field Headquarters. Urgent, Ferguson to Harding. Harding, Pacific Coast Field Headquarters. Reference confidential file R33X, sir. Confidential file R33X. Go ahead, Ferguson. Special request has just come through from the State Department that you personally meet the liner SS Tregania, which arrives in New York tomorrow. What time is the Tregania due? It's scheduled to dock at Pier 33 at 10 a.m. All right, Ferguson, I have a cutter standing by for my use. And notify the parties concerned that I'll board the Tregania at Ambrose Light. Yes, sir, will do. Peters, notify Spaulding that I'm putting him in charge of our present operation here on the West Coast till you and I get back. Till we get back? Where are we going? Now, after you talk to Spaulding, call the airport and order the jet to be ready for a takeoff within an hour. Why the big rush, Mr. Harding? What's up? We're making an emergency flight to New York, Peters. I'll give you the details on the way. Mr. Harding, how about those details now? Peters, we're flying to New York in reference to confidential file R33X. File R33X? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. You weren't in Washington last week when I discussed the matter with Mr. Johnson of the State Department. No. Just what is R33X, Chief? That's the code number for a special mission to Washington by Mr. Ramon Sierra. Ramon Sierra, the Philippine statesman? Yes. Mr. Sierra and his aide, Colonel Manuel Quinto, are scheduled to arrive in New York tomorrow morning aboard the liner Tregania. I don't get it, Dave. Why New York? Well, Mr. Sierra is ostensibly taking a long ocean voyage for his health. Ostensibly? Uh Uh-huh. A cover-up for his business here, hmm? Exactly. Very careful plans were made not to arouse the suspicions of Huck espionage agents in the Philippines. The secret conference in Washington will deal with a defense plan for the islands in case of a surprise attack like the Korean affair. Certainly big stuff, Dave. There's no telling what espionage agents would do to get information and what will be said at that conference. Or no telling what they would do to stop it. That's why we're on our way to New York, Peters, to make sure that Mr. Sierra's mission is accomplished safely and successfully. Senor Sierra? Senor? Over here, Colonel Kinder, at the deck's rail. Uh, what is it, Colonel King? I have been looking all over the ship for you, Senor Sierra. Oh? We have just received a radiogram from Mr. David Harding of the United States Counter Spies. He's meeting us aboard tomorrow morning to escort you to Washington. Ah, David Harding. I will be delighted to see him again. You don't understand, Senor Sierra. There must be a special reason for Mr. Harding himself to come. The Counter Spies must have some special information regarding personal danger to you. Uh, now, now, Colonel, do not let your imagination run away with you. I'm sure Mr. Harding comes only because of protocol. Just this same, senor, I will not rest easy until tomorrow. I suggest we return to our cabin and remain there until Mr. Harding comes aboard. What I am expected in a few minutes at Mr. Douglas's cabin. We are to continue our chess game. Please, senor, do as I ask. We can afford to trust no one. <laughs> Colonel Kinder, you are actually worried about Mr. Douglas. After all, what do we know of him? We know that Mr. Robert Douglas is a retired American businessman returning home after a visit to doctors in Vienna. (laughs) Espionage agents make use of many disguises. (laughs) Mr. Douglas, an espionage agent. 
Now, Coronel, you're carrying things much too far. Mr. Douglas is a paralytic, confined to a wheelchair for over five years. Yeah. Why, he's so helpless, his nurse, Miss Marshall, even has to make the moves on the chessboard for him. Just the same, Senor Sierra, we must take every precaution. The future security of our nation is dependent upon your mission. I must insist that you return with me to our cabin. I am sorry, Coronel, but I have promised my company to a sick man. The least I can do my last night aboard is keep such a promise. Oh, good evening, Mr. Sierra. Won't you come in? Thank you, Miss Marshall. I've already set up the chessboard, and Mr. Douglas is raring to go. I most certainly am, Mr. Sierra. I brought my aide, Colonel Quinto, along. I believe you gentlemen know each other? Yes, we do. Of course. Glad to have you here, Colonel. Thank you. To be truthful, Mr. Douglas, the Colonel insisted upon coming. Insisted? The Colonel has a notion that you may be a spy. A spy? Really? As a matter of fact, Mr. Douglas, I can safely say now that you are a spy. You are no more a wheelchair invalid than I am. Is that not true? All right, Colonel Quinto. Coronel, he's got an out of the wheelchair. And Miss Marshall is not a nurse. Are you, Miss Marshall? No, I'm not a nurse. But I do know how to administer a hypodermic when its use is called for. Colonel Quinto, you were correct about them all along. I should have listened to you. Oh, no. I am glad you did not. What? What do you mean? I wanted you to come here. That was the plan. Plan? I know your nature very well by this time. I knew you would insist upon coming if I just went so far. But I, uh, I don't understand. You have the hypodermic ready, Miss Marshall? Ready, Colonel. Now? In a moment. Now, do you understand, Sierra? You? You have been working with them. We all work in the same cause. You? And I trusted you That as... was my purpose, to gain your complete trust. And to make sure that you did not get to that Washington conference tomorrow. Your plan will not work, Quinto. Mr. Harding will discover what happened when he investigates my death. But you are not going to die. At least not yet. And you attend that conference tomorrow, but in name only. Is that not right, Douglas? Si, sí, Coronel Quinto. I will attend. He, he has my voice. And that is not all. If you look at Douglas more closely, you will notice that he has your build, too, and your features. Perhaps that is why you were attracted to me, eh, Sierra? The impersonation will be flawless. Douglas has been trained well for his assignment. He has memorized all important facts in your career. And Miss Marshall has heard you this, too. I'll use this hypodermic, Mr. Sierra, to keep you quiet and unobtrusive. So I'll have no difficulty in getting you, as the paralytic Mr. Douglas off this boat tomorrow morning in New York. And from the boat, you will be taken away by a special ambulance. All right, Miss Marshall. Now, Mr. Sierra. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I promise to take very good care of you, Mr. Sierra. What is... Yes. Uh... Miss Marshall will take very good care of you until she is instructed to do otherwise. I don't know what... Feeling is tired? That... Oh, Senor Sierra? This is unbelievable. Fantastic. Of course, Sierra. Fantastic. Unbelievable. That is what we rely on for our success. No one would believe that such a daring venture as this would be attempted. Mm. No one. Not even David Harding. <laughs> David Harding, United States Counterspy. Ah, I am Coronel Manuel Quinto, aide to Senor Sierra. Colonel? Come in, please, Senor Harding. Thank you. I am delighted to see you again, Senor ah, Harding. Thank you, Mr. Sierra, and welcome back to the United States. Ah, it is good to be here again, Senor, and to renew old friendships, <laughs> especially with you. Well, I've been looking forward to this meeting, too, sir. Uh, let's see... Uh, when last we met, ah, yes, it was in December 1943, the conference at your office in Washington in regard to establishing intelligence contact with our partisan forces. Is that not correct? Oh, yes, yes, that's correct, Mr. Sierra. There was such a conference in my office. Uh, yes. 
Senor Sierra has a remarkable memory for dates, places, and persons, Senor Hardy. Especially such a person as you, Senor Hardy. <laughs> well, I am sincerely impressed, sir. Tell me, did you have a good voice? Very restful, thank you. And very uneventful, we are happy to report. Well, gentlemen, I can see no reason why the remainder of your trip should be any more troublesome. Uh, not as long as we are in your hands, Senor Hardy. <laughs> Miss Marshall. Why, what is it, Purser? I saw you starting down this gangplank with that wheelchair. Well, I, I'm taking Mr. Douglas to the ambulance waiting on the dock. Is there something wrong? Why, no, miss. Just thought I, I'd give you some help. Oh. Well, no, no, thank you, Purser. I, I'm quite able to handle it myself. Very well. Oh. I, I say. Yes? Mr. Douglas, he's looking rather strange this morning. Strange? Yes, as if there's something the matter with him. He's not moving. Oh, oh, that's nothing at all. He's just asleep. I gave him a sedative. Oh, I see. You see, he's had a very trying day. Well, Miss Marshall, he's certainly a lucky man having someone as attentive as you are to take care of him. <laughs> Why, that's my job. That's what I get paid for. Oh, no, Miss Marshall. I've noticed you many times during this trip. It's obvious to me that you're not just interested in the money that goes with your job. <laughs> Ah, Miss Marshall. Uh, there's a dirt road just ahead on the left. Will you uh, drive the ambulance in there and park? Right. How's your patient back there? Still asleep? Uh-huh. And he'll be that way for hours. How far you want to go, Miss Marshall? Oh, just a little farther. I've got a car parked in the woods on the side of the road. All right. Stop here. Okay, Miss Marshall, I'll take him out, get him in the car for you. Well, that won't be necessary, driver. I can handle it myself. He's kind of heavy, you know. I can manage, and I can manage this gun, too. You are listening to the case of the insidious impersonation on Counter Spy. Sunday afternoon chimes mean mystery and action on NBC. Mike Waring, better known as the Falcon, lends his debonair touch to the solution of another mystery, followed by that polite, diplomatic, and very deadly detective, the Saint. After the Saint, hear the big guy. And then your Sunday afternoon of mystery concludes with that new private eye, Charlie Wilde, who goes into action with a swash of the buckle and a few nonchalant homicides. Now, back to Counter Spy. Uh, Mr. Johnson's office is right down this corridor, Mr. Sierra. Uh, Senor Hardy, Colonel Quinto and I are very grateful to you and Senor Peters for escorting us here to Washington for the conference. It was an honor, Mr. Sierra. Here we are. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Harding. Afternoon, Miss Lane. This is Mr. Ramon Sierra and his aide, Colonel Quinto. Uh, Mr. Johnson is expecting the gentleman in his office. Mm. Uh, let me thank you again, Senor Hardy. The pleasure was mine, sir. I hope to see you once more before I leave Washington. I'm sure we'll see each other again. This way, gentlemen, please. Adios, Senor Hardy. Goodbye, Colonel Quinto. Well, Dave, our job's finished. No, Peter. Our real job has just begun. What do you mean? Hold on a moment. I talked to Mr. Johnson on this phone. Hello? Mr. Johnson, this is Harding. Now listen closely. Don't give away that you're talking to me. And don't act surprised by what I'm going to tell you. I, uh, I see. Very well. The man who was just brought into your office is not Ramon Sierra. What? The man in your office is an imposter, undoubtedly an espionage agent. Now you'll have to handle this very delicately. Play along as much as you can, but give out no valuable information. You understand? Uh, yes. Yes, I understand fully. Uh, the matter will be taken care of as expertly as possible. 
Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I or one of my agents will be in touch with you after today's conference. National Airport, Thompson. Make it fast. Dave, I don't get all this. I didn't have a chance to explain before, Peter. Now, hold on just another moment while I use the radio. Harding, car S1, calling headquarters. Agent Ferguson, go ahead, Mr. Harding. I just left the State Department building, Ferguson. I want a squad of men sent over immediately to Mr. Johnson's office in the Pacific Affairs Division. Yes, sir. Now, my orders are to have Ramon Sierra and Colonel Quinto kept under constant surveillance. Now, one more thing. Yes, Chief. Contact the airport. Tell them I want the jet ready for an immediate flight back to New York. Will do, Mr. Harding. Dave, when did you find out he wasn't the real Ramon Sierra? When I first spoke to him in his cabin on the Tregania. Oh? He made a point of reminding me that we had met at a conference in my office back in 1943. Well, there was such a conference then, but I wasn't there. I'd been rushed to the Naval Hospital at Bethesda for an appendectomy. He was trying all out to sell himself to you. Yes. Lucky for us, he oversold himself. Dave, this is one of the most daring schemes on record. Yes, Peters. And now we've got about the most ticklish counter-spy job on record. Plenty of international ramifications that could blow up right in our face. We're going to have to work in complete secrecy. Decide on any special modus operandi? No, nothing special. We're flying right back to New York. We're going to dig until we find out what happened to the real Ramon Sierra. Did you have a pleasant sleep? Miss Marshall? That's right, Miss Marshall. But what are you doing in my cabin? We're not in your cabin. We're alone, Mr. Sierra, in a cottage on the south shore of Long Island. We left the ship over ten hours ago. We came here by special ambulance. Then, then it was no dream. No dream, Mr. Sierra. Any more than this gun is a dream. Oh, I know you'll be sensible and won't force me to shoot it prematurely. Colonel Quinto, he, he has gone to Washington? Yes. Colonel Quinto and you, Mr. Sierra, are now in Washington. Thanks to none other than David Harding, the chief of the United States Counter Spies himself. This insane scheme will never succeed. It can't fail. You, Mr. Sierra, have already completed the first part of those very important talks with the State Department official, Mr. Johnson. And by this time tomorrow evening, our work here will be finished. And no one will be the wiser. Until, of course, it is much too late. Peters in patrol car at Pier 33 to Harding, New York field office. Urgent. Peters to Harding. Harding, go ahead, Peters. Hello, Dave. I just went over the passenger list of the Tregania with the ship's purser. I've got something that might be a break in the case. Suggest you come down and talk to the purser yourself. All right, Peters. I'm on my way there. Well, Colonel Quinto, I would say we are well on our way to success. Yes. And, Douglas, you can stop with the impersonation as long as we are alone in the hotel room, eh? All right, Kendra. But I've come to really enjoy the part, especially deceiving Harding. Yeah, you've done very well. Thanks. A drink, Douglas. Delighted. Uh, scotch, is it not? Uh-huh. With soda. But light on the soda. <laughs> uh, here you are. Thanks. Too bad Miss Marshall can't be here to enjoy this. I am sure Miss Marshall is getting equal enjoyment out of her part of the job. Yes, I suppose so. She's a rather peculiar woman. I don't think I could ever kill anyone in cold blood. She always seemed to get a thrill out of it. But everyone who his own taste, huh? In our cause, Douglas, it is everyone to his own usefulness. Oh, yeah. Yes, I forgot. <clears throat> well, how about a toast, eh, Quinto? To tomorrow and the final session of the conference. And to tomorrow. 
and the phone call I shall make to Miss Marshall. And uh, that's the story, Mr. Harding. You see, sir, uh, I offered to help Miss Marshall take the wheelchair down the gangplank, but she wouldn't allow me. And this happened, Purser, after the other passengers debarked? Oh, huh? yes, sir, quite a time after. Uh, would you please tell Mr. Harding the condition of Miss Marshall's patient? All right, Mr. Peters. Well, Mr. Douglas looked rather well, strange to me. He was slumped over in the wheelchair, motionless. Miss Marshall told the purser that she'd given Mr. Douglas a sedative, Chief. I see. Did you see Mr. Douglas' face? Only part of it, sir. You see, his coat collar was up and his hat was pulled down. Oh. Well, did you notice where they went when they got down onto the pier? Luckily, he did, Mr. Harding. There was an ambulance waiting for them, and they drove off immediately. Oh? I've already radioed our agents in this area to investigate all ambulance services. Yeah, good. Now, one more thing, person. <clears throat> Purser, during the time he was aboard ship, did Mr. Douglas uh, have any close acquaintances? Well, sir, now that you ask, I, I do recall him being friendly with another passenger, uh, uh, Mr. Raymond Sierra. Sierra, huh? Yes, Mr. Harding, very friendly. I hope I've been some help. You certainly have. Thank you very much. Let's go, Peters. New York field office, Harding speaking. Peters, Dave. Braden and I just finished our check on Robert Douglas. And? Just as you figured, the name is a phony. No such person living at the address given in the ship's record. Braden was in touch with the passport division of the State Department. Both Douglas and Miss Marshall's passports are not recorded. Is that it? That's it, Chief. No doubt now that Douglas changed places with Mr. Sierra. Yeah, none at all. Well, we've got Douglas under surveillance, but now the trick is to find Miss Marshall and her new patient. Yeah, but where to start looking? Well, get those reports from those ambulance services we're investigating. And uh, this, Mr. Sierra, is the amount of money the United States will furnish to your government for the purchase of... Uh, Defense equipment. Uh, Senor Johnson, the Filipino Republic is everlastingly grateful for this great kindness. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, you you must be tired, Mr. Sierra. We've we've been at this conference table for over seven hours. Oh uh, no, 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 Senor. I, I am fine. Well, we could finish the remainder of our business tomorrow morning. Uh, Senor Johnson, I am anxious to finish tonight so I can return quickly to my people with the good news. I am sure you understand. Uh, yes, Mr. Sierra, I'm sure I understand fully. Well, then, we'll go right on. We should be through by 8 o'clock if you have to make any plans. 8 o'clock? Uh -huh. I will call my aide, Colonel Quinto, at our hotel so he can make the necessary arrangements. Harrison just phoned in, Dave. He located the ambulance. Good. Not so good. Why? What's wrong? The ambulance was not driven to the place noted on the service's record. Well, what about the driver of the ambulance? Didn't Harrison check with him? Harrison couldn't check with him, Dave. The driver was found this morning out in some woods on Long Island. Dead. Shot through the head. Hello? Miss Marshall, Coronel Quinto. Oh, I've been waiting to hear from you. Sierra is almost finished with his work here in Washington. You will take a plane and meet us in San Francisco tomorrow evening. Then everything is all set? Everything. What about my patient? It is now 25 minutes of 8. Sierra will be through with the conference at exactly 8. And unless you hear from me to the contrary, at exactly 8 o'clock, you will put your patient out of his misery. <laughs> Communications section, Washington, to Harding, New York field office. Blow alert on Sierra case. Stand by. Blow alert. Vital information coming through. Stand by. Harding, control car S1 to all motor patrols in New York area. Disregard all previous orders and converge immediately on house at 56 Elm Drive, Glenmore, Long Island. Repeat, 56 Elm Drive, Glenmore, Long Island. One minute of eight.
wait, Mr. Sierra. You have exactly one more minute to live. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? Aren't you afraid? You just sit there smiling. I smile, Miss Marshall, because in the end I know I will win and you and the others will lose. <laughs> we can't lose now. There's nothing to stop us. There is always something, someone to stop people like you. Mm, for a man who's about to be shot to death, you seem very brave. Death does not frighten me. I'm an old man. I have lived a full life. Oh, no regrets, eh? Only one. And that? That I will not be present when you and the others are brought to trial. Your time is up, Mr. Sierra. Now we two say goodbye. <gasps> Hello? Put that gun down, Miss Marshall. What? Put it down. Who is this? You're too late now, Miss Marshall. Too late to kill Mr. Sierra. What kind of a trick is this? Who's talking? You have exactly three seconds to put that gun on the table. Who are you? Why are you calling me? Your time is up, Miss Marshall. Oh, no, you can't trick me. I'll do what I have to then do. Then you'll be killed yourself by Mr. Harding. Harding? He's standing right behind you in the doorway. You can't fool me. No one is in this cottage. No one knows I'm here. Harding could never find me. That's where you're wrong, Miss Marshall. What? Look out, Peter! <laughs> the next shot is for keeps. Now you're going to do as you're told. That, that voice on the phone. That was one of my agents talking to you by radio phone from one of the patrol cars outside this house. We were playing for a few extra seconds to save Mr. Sierra. I told the Senor Harding that she and the others would lose. How did you ever find us here? What happened to Quinto and Douglas? We had a tap on Quinto's hotel phone. While he was talking to you earlier, my agents were busy checking the address that went with this phone number. It's for Quinto and Douglas. They're waiting for you in Washington. We're arranging a very special kind of conference for all of you. All right, Peters, you can take her out. I'll be along in a minute with Mr. Sierra. Come on, let's go. Senor Harding, it is good to see you again. You too, Mr. Sierra. You've no idea how good. Tune in every Friday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next Friday for the exciting case of the Carbon Console. When a broken pencil was fitted together 3,000 miles from Counterspy headquarters, the matching pieces blew wide open one of the most sinister international intrigues on record. The full case history will be revealed next Friday in Case of the Carbon Console on Counterspy. <laughs> Tonight's counter-spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marx B. Loeb, dramatized by Edward J. Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Counter-spy is produced by Phillips H. Lord. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. The chimes are really excited about a big show. In fact, it is the big show, coming soon on NBC. It'll be an hour and a half every Sunday night, with Tallulah Bankhead as Femme C, and featuring such stars as Jimmy Durante, Fred Allen, and Groucho Marx. Sunday, November 5th.